This is Women in Music with G Fire Podcast, episode number 33 with singer songwriter Paige Berry. she is hi hey Paige I love weird all right <laughs> there it is. yeah it's my um there's a set of these there's a story behind it doesn't matter the other one says I am weird oh <laughs> I am weird and this one says I love weird <laughs> oh so it's uh, like a couple's uh-huh I got it I gave it to a dude that I was briefly dating which I shouldn't have anyway and then I was I asked for it back. <laughs> so you have both of them now? Uh. Oh, that's, that's terrific. Thanks. Thanks, I thought so. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing pretty well. Somebody's making a lot of noise. I don't know if you can hear the construction going on, but... Uh, I can't. No. Good. That's. I'm hoping it, it, we're going to be louder than that by a long, long time. Yeah. Minute. No, so, it's oh. great. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me on and for allowing my weird coffee mug moment <laughs> you know i mean i well i teach for my day job piano and singing and guitar and songwriting oh, cool. and sometimes my students get me coffee mugs that's sweet so i've one that that's called uh it says good morning is an oxymoron uh-huh yeah i'm there with uh-huh. you I am um, not a morning person, but I do. I have a vast collection of mugs. They bring me joy. So oh, I me can, too. Yeah. I, I love different coffee mugs. I've got a teacup that has these two, uh, I, I like to think of them as songbirds on it. Like mm-hmm. these two birds hanging. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cute. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I was looking at your picture today, and I'm like, she's wearing this necklace, but I can't tell what it says. So you sent me a promo picture, and it's like a gold necklace. Yeah, that's my um, that's my page necklace. It so says, it says page, page on it. Oh, okay, my I just parents had it made for me in Dollywood. Are you familiar with Dollywood? Well, I haven't been, but everybody knows Dolly Parton is the owner of Dollywood. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it was like at a craft booth. Uh, like a little old man like twisted it with his hands and I wear it almost every day I've had it for years now wow because I was interested that you ask about it because I wear it yeah pretty much all the time but very few people notice so <laughs> I was just like you know because I, I was like I was trying to figure out what it was mm, that makes mm-hmm. sense that your parents would give you a page necklace yeah, it's really sweet they're good yeah and Dollywood's amazing you, oh, you've been to Dollywood then? Oh, I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee. So oh, cool. I, I live like, or well, my parents live maybe 45 minutes away from Dollywood. But are you here in Austin now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm okay. Yeah, oh, okay. I've been, here for, uh-huh. um, I've been here for five years, six. I moved here in 20, August of 2015. Um, but I go home all the time. Uh-huh pick a place <laughs> that sounds and how far is knoxville from nashville um it's like three hours east. Oh, okay so it's not around the corner or anything no but like it's really not a bad drive um i don't go to nashville too often but um i am going there i'm doing a little mini tour in the next like a month like a solo tour uh-huh. and uh, i'm gonna do two nights in nashville and i'm really where, where are you gonna play um, we're playing at a little dive bar called Springwater. Um, okay. it's Jolton Mayfield and Ann Malin. And, um, I was connected with Jolton through Katie Kirby, who is on Keeled Scales, which is a label here, a small label here. Okay. So you've got, it's like sort of goes back to Tennessee, uh-huh. then back to here and then back to Tennessee. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. I've got some really nice, like, crossover it's good stuff yeah it sounds good mm-hmm. i have not played nashville at this point this will be my first time we were supposed to play um last april 
but then you know the pandemic happened uh we had a whole tour like a full band tour um lined up and south by shows and a release show and all the things and we had to cancel of course and uh it was a bummer it was really really sad (laughs) uh to say in the least but um i'm really glad to get some sort of do-over now (laughs) right exactly just kind of ease your way back into it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and it's on my way home to knoxville Oh, well, that's good, too. So you just, you know, you combine the things. Really, I I planned the trip to go home. I was like, you know, I I need a brain break. I go home when I need some time, usually, uh, for myself, because it's just so pretty. And my parents are such sweet people, um, and they let me stay in their, like, camper, so I have my own kind of space. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, But they, um, yeah, I was like, oh, I should um." I'll just do a little tour on the way. I decided, I think, really last minute to do this tour. Mm -hmm. And by last minute, I mean like a month ago. Right. But in terms of booking, like pretty last minute. Um, But I've had, I mean, I've got like eight eight dates. um, And all but two of them are pretty much confirmed, which is beautiful <laughs> yeah absolutely now do you, do you send out contracts and stuff or is it just kind of an over the phone we just book it yeah just um usually I send out an email with our press kit um okay. and they get back to me or they don't and I send a bunch of emails until I hear from somebody <laughs> right right just keep at uh, it until you, you know uh-uh. yeah I I um in the beginning I was really nervous about pestering people I like didn't want to bother anybody but um, my partner at the time was like this is just what it is like you just you're not pestering them like they expect it you know the worst they can do is say no exactly well obviously being respectful you know I'm never like where are you or whatever I'm just like hey I'm circling back um and you know only a couple times usually until it's I'm done (laughs) so I'm trying but um uh yeah uh booking's a weird thing I feel like you have to like it's really vulnerable to sort of like pitch yourself right over and over again right but we have to kind of do that at this point mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know unless you're Taylor Swift or somebody and they have people oh, for that, sure. that sort of thing yeah I am um, and it's me usually. I the band chips in in you know ways that they can, but they're all. Everyone in my band is in multiple bands except for me. This right. is my only project, right? And I do all the you know marketing and management and booking and PR and anything you know behind the scenes is me, and uh, it's a lot of work. Music right. is a lot more work than I realized going into it, you know. <laughs> but, you know, again, as indie artists, mm-hmm. it's kind of what we're signed up for at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm hoping, you know, we get to a place where, you know, either we sign with a label or we're able to hire a manager or a booking agent, Um I, I get, you know, I get frustrated doing the whole like boatload of everything (laughs) myself, but, but also it's like, it does, I mean, I feel accomplished at the end of the day. I'm like, you know, I I think it's interesting or like sometimes on stage, I'll like throw this out there and I'm like, if you ever see somebody like being successful and not necessarily me or us, but like just any artist, like it's just the tip of the iceberg, you know, they're out here just absolutely busting ass, like behind the scene to get to like this moment, uh, you know, this 30 minutes in front of you, like on a stage. And, um, so that's pretty validating. Like there's the side of like it being really vulnerable, being like, pick me, love me. (laughs) But then the other part is like, oh, I did, I did this. Like I organized this and there's like no magic. I mean, there's some magic to it. Right. But 
mostly it's just persistence. You know? Right. Now, do most of the places give you a guarantee or do you take part of the door? You know, most most of the time it's the door. Mm-hmm. Um, I That's actually something I've been thinking about lately. Um, I struggle to ask for a guarantee. Um just because, you know, going and getting started with all this, I was I was like, I'm going to take whatever gig I can get at whatever pay because we just need to play out. Right. Um, and we've done that for, I mean, Half Dream's been a project since 2017, I think like the end of 2017. Right. Maybe like, no, maybe more like 2018. It's been at least two years, maybe a little more. Um, but we're at the place where like we should be asking for a guarantee. Right. Right. But I'm still inside, like, please let us play, (laughs) you know? Um, and there's no, I mean, yeah, there's no, um, I guess shame is the word that's coming up, but like, I, we should be asking for a guarantee. Um, and that's definitely come up recently. Um, especially now as we've like sort of hit the restart with pandemic. Right. It feels like the pay structures around town, are getting um they're getting better like i our payouts have been so just like vastly better than they ever were before pandemic because the covers were non-existent or lower um and now you know most places are ten dollars at the door and that's just the way it always should have been exactly and um and people are willing to pay it for the most part because they've missed music <laughs> and they're right. like they're like, oh you're back uh-huh they're like we'll we'll give you twenty dollars <laughs> um which like we haven't played a twenty dollar show that i can think of but um right. I, yeah yeah <laughs> but Ken, now do you, do you usually get all the door or i guess it depends um, on the club it depends it's usually a portion um and like i said lately it's been like i really feel like the venues are the venues we typically play or like hotel vegas um chair of charlie's although they're not doing bands right now um gosh the far out uh like blanking we're playing meanwhile brewing soon um and i haven't played there before but um yeah they they have been really good about um like charging higher ticket sales Um, right so typically, if they charge ten at the door, do you get five or? I don't know. I like. I should like again. I should pay like closer attention. Okay. I'm to, just like, curious. The- yeah. I'm also like, who's gonna watch this and be like, she got it wrong. <laughs> oh well, it's it's all audio. I I, just, I know, I, but yeah, like, yeah. Listen but listen to it. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, you know, I only interview people that are in the mid mid level, basically. Oh. Wow. At this point, so that means something. Well, we're indie artists, but that means we do a lot of the work ourselves. Mm. You know, I mean, I had Rosie Flores on, and you know, she's still playing for however many people at the Continental Club or whatever, even though she's been in the business for like fifty years now. Yeah. Um. So, and I had Susan Gibson on. You know, who had the big hit with uh, Wide Open Spaces and stuff like that. But she's still oh, yeah. booking her own house concerts, and you know, so everybody that I talk to seems to be doing a lot of booking, management, whatever, tour planning. That's really comforting. It's yeah. like really, uh, I want more for us. <laughs> like I want us to have like more support and money to be able to. Well, just because I feel something that. I've sort of learned in this process of um, being a more active musician is like, well, most people don't view music as legitimate labor, you know, um, that we're like actually working and working really hard. Um, like it's dispensable and that's just because like capitalism doesn't value you know art the way that it does you know insert like x other thing um so yeah that's been that's been interesting to observe and like 
it's I just want to like give such a big hand clap to everyone who's like still you know like 50 years later like just still out here doing the like nitty gritty like dirty work um of like trying to be legitimized and um I think it can be really frustrating uh that that feeling um but also like I was saying earlier yeah like really really validating um and I think it also kind of forces us to rely on each other more like as a community which always feels good and there's a way to do that when you can lean on your people right Mm -hmm. well uh, let me get into my normal uh, podcast questions let's see you're originally from Knoxville Uh uh-huh and you just came straight to Austin from Knoxville or did you have any other I did um yeah 2015 I kind of (laughs) hit I kind of hit a wall I was like not doing so well I I had been in Knoxville um my whole life um always been really interested in travel my dad's in broadcasting um so nice yeah so I've been around music and radio my whole life and he travels with the um University of Tennessee athletic teams football and basketball so he's a sportscaster uh, he's a broadcast engineer so he puts on the broadcasts he's there like with the with the people who are doing the talking, making them sound good, you know. Exactly. Uh huh. Um, yeah. That, no, that's really important. It is. Yeah. And um, so I, we're really similar in some ways, me and my dad. And um, I've always loved traveling. Always loved singing. Always loved radio. So in a way, it's like not surprising. Like I didn't see it coming, being a musician. But like, it's not surprising. All that to say, that is not where I was <laughs> at the time. Like I was working a um, nine to five design job and loved loved them. Like I loved uh, the studio owners so much, but I was just miserable in my relationship. I was miserable. I was an alcoholic. I was just like very unhappy and. Um, kind of had like a really traumatic like event that was like the wake up call. And I had been feeling like I needed to move away forever, (laughs) but then it was like very pressing all of a sudden. So I quit my job and was in Austin within a month Mm -hmm. or less. So yeah, I, I came straight from Knoxville to Austin and it wasn't even on my radar. Like Austin didn't like exist to me before I decided to move there. But my therapist, my first therapist uh, was from Kerrville, Texas. Okay. And And, she um, suggested Austin. Yeah. Well, she just, you know, it's not even that she suggested it. She just spoke so fondly of it all the time. And I was like, man, that sounds like such a cool place. And um, when I had the realization where I was like, I have to get out of here, it was almost just like popped into my head. It was like Austin. And I was like, yeah, why not? And my mom and I booked a flight, um, the end of that, like I decided, I think on like a Wednesday and we were on a flight on a Saturday, Mm -hmm. like I quit my job that day. And then we were like on the plane at the end of the week. We both loved it. Like we both fell in love with it immediately. It was 4th of July weekend. Mm -hmm. So they had everything going down at the, um, long center. It was a long center. The Auditorium Shores. Auditorium Shores. Yeah, they normally have like a symphony or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire, fireworks, all that good stuff. Yeah, and it, yeah. Was, you know, it was on the river, which really reminded me of Knoxville. And it's like, there's some crossover between them. And um, and then, yeah, and then I was out here pretty immediately. Didn't know Austin was the capital of Texas. That's really embarrassing. That's okay. Uh, and I also didn't know that it was the live music capital of the world, which is also wild. Um but I do now. <laughs> uh, That's good. Uh, You've assimilated some of the Austin spirit. Yeah. I, man, I love it here. I mean, there's, it has its ups and downs and like, I've seen it change so much just even in my brief time being here. But, um, I, there's nothing like the music community here. And I, I didn't, you know, I don't talk about this too much because I like to keep my cards close, but I didn't play guitar before I moved to Austin. Mm -hmm. So I didn't start playing guitar until 2017, like right, I mean, a few months before we started the band. 
Okay. And um, I just wrote a bunch of songs like really quickly. And um, once you came here, (laughs) once I came here. Yeah. I met my partner at the time and um, he was a musician and um, Tyler Jordan is his name. Uh, We're not together as of last year, but um, incredible songwriter. And uh, he introduced me to the Kerrville Folk Festival. Mm hmm. And I went out there and was just blown away. Loved it. Um, but I felt like I really wanted to participate and I didn't know how without playing guitar. Um, and so I just made the goal of like learning to play um, even just a cover on guitar and coming back the next year and sharing it like at a song circle. And I went home and I got my dad's guitar that he does not play. <laughs> we had lessons with each other, like when I was like 12. Um, but then it just sat in a closet and, uh, grabbed it, came back and then, yeah. And then I just ended up learning really quickly and not even like, I'm not technically proficient really. I mean, I am now in some ways, but mostly I was just so blown away by the fact that I could just like pick out cool you know, cool sounds and put them together. And I didn't have to know like what it meant. I, it just sounded cool. And the words poured out of me and I've always been a writer and like a poet. Um, so they kind of, the things kind of just like melded together and, um, eventually not too long after, like I had a couple songs, I went out to the folk festival. Um, it was so well received. I was so nervous like I shared my song for the first time in a song circle the following year and I thought I was gonna throw up Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um but it was just like everyone was so supportive and so kind and um yeah Austin really and and it's not that people weren't kind in Knoxville but you know they just didn't experience me as that same person and so it was almost like a refresh it was like a do-over in some way um, and everyone was just so encouraging, even though I was like, man, I was so shitty at guitar, you know, <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't know like what I was doing and I was like real fumbly, but like they could see, I think like the potential of the thing. And like, that's been so, I've really carried that with me. And I talked to a lot of, I try to talk to other musicians or people who want to play music, particularly women. I'm like, dude, just just pick up the guitar and make a sound you think is cool. And just remember it. Just remember where your fingers are. You don't even have to know. Like, you don't even have to know what you're doing. <laughs> like, if it feels good to you and it sounds good and you're, like, sharing your story or a narrative that it feels important to you, then, like, you don't have to be a shredder, you know? Like, I think the world just needs more storytellers. So you should just, like, do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I tell myself sorry I get I, I stayed up too late last night and now I'm like really low quick I got my coffee and got now, your coffee now you're like bam ready to go <laughs> so I'll let you continue sorry <laughs> that's okay no no um let's just uh the song you sent me was is called Celia right hmm. yeah and hmm. let's just set it up a bit and then I'll play it for the listeners and then we'll come back and discuss it so what is the uh what what is Celia about? Um, so Celia is about my grandmother. Um, she passed away in, I believe it was 2017. But we were incredibly close. And um, she, I mean, she more or less helped raise me uh, pretty significantly, or it was like very significantly involved in my life and um, kept me every day after high school. Like she would pick me up from school, like before I could drive. And um, I was such a snotty, like, teenager. I mean, I was sweet, but I was just so tired all the time. And um, I would come home with her, and she would, you know, have snacks for me. And we would watch Little House on the Prairie. And then I would take my nap. And then I would wake up, and we would watch Jeopardy. And I didn't get internet there. um, So I would do my homework and just hang out with her and, like, kind of live the mamma lifestyle with her and then go home and be up on the internet all night and do it over again, you know, the next day. But um, I think having, this is so obvious to me now that I don't have, or that I have Instagram or I'm like social media is like more of a thing, but 
not having internet in that space, it like really forced me to be present. And it also just gave me a place to rest and also to be myself. And she just by proxy, like received and absorbed so much of my like angst (laughs) and like growing pains. Like she was just so present for that really like, um, formative time in my life. And I, we just both got really, really close, um, in that time. And, um, I would pop by anytime, particularly when I was feeling down, like I would drive once I could drive, I would just show up at her house. And I always knew that there was like a place for me there. Um, and you know, she was really, uh, religious and I was too until like college, but, um, Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was like believable when it was from her. Like it was like, it. I felt just really um, loved and safe and pr- safe and protected uh, in in her presence. And um, when she passed, it was really like I'm getting emotional now. It's still hard. Like I'm looking at a picture of her on my wall. Like <laughs> uh, she she was just very very sweet and funny and strong like worked on a farm her whole like upbringing like you know harvesting tobacco like hard worker you know lived through the depression the you know world war one world war two like she's she was born in 1921 so she lived to be 96 wow so yeah yeah incredible and you know she didn't do she had parkinson's and um was pretty out of it in the last like year of her life but even in into the last I would say three or four years was still just so sharp so funny um just such a sweet vibrant person um who I would give anything to be more like and um so when she passed it was really really hard for me and um I think about her pretty much on a daily basis and um at the time I was, I was in guitar lessons, uh, when she, when she passed and, um, with Jake Farr, if anyone's looking for a guitar teacher, the plug, Jake Farr is incredible, very patient, um, really kind guy, but he had challenged me. I came back and in one of our lessons, he challenged me to write a song in drop D and, um, so that was the first thing that just kind of poured out of me. Like I went to write, you know, just play around uh, with the song and drop D and I was like, Oh, I really like the way this sounds. Like it was just so like, I don't know, rich or I really like drop D, but it's funny because it's it so often used by like metal, like metal. Right. Like, right. Artists. So I think it's like funny that it's a song about my grandmother that's in drop D and I make that joke too much um, on stage. But uh, yeah, it just sort of poured out of me and it was really cathartic. And um, I, yeah, it was like an instant hit (laughs) or like I, I played it for my partner and he was like, yeah, this is good. And I was like, this is good, I think. And, um, I just feel, I said this recently when I in a show, but I feel really lucky to be able to think about her every time I play the song. It's almost like, I don't know, it's like a meditative, because I'm really there when I'm playing the song, I'm like really thinking about the things that I'm talking about with all my songs, but particularly this one, I really like call her to my mind and it it feels like we get to spend those like four minutes together or like three minutes. Um, And yeah, and it's been really well received and it's uh, like, he's, you know, like you saw or know it's in rotation on KTX, which is, I know that's, that's, you know, it's actually unusual for an Austin act. It's, it is. And I am floored. I, it does not escape me like how, you know, big of a deal that is. And right. um, how did you get so, in rotation? Yeah, I just, I, well, a couple things. I worked with Tiger Bomb promo out of Athens, Georgia. Uh, Shil Patel is his name and um, man, and there's a few other people on his team, but just so, um, such a nice guy, so genuine, down to earth. I think with like PR, you can get uh, 
duped <laughs> sometimes, but this was a radio promo mm-hmm. uh, campaign as part of our Kickstarter because the album Monster of Needing that we released in October 2020 uh, was fully crowdfunded, which is incredible. We didn't have the money. <laughs> There's no way we were going to be able to make, um, you know, a quality record um, right. and support it in all the ways that we wanted to on our own. Um, How much did you have that, to raise? Seven thousand dollars, okay, around seven thousand, um, and that was for new merch. Or we didn't really have. We had some Pedrone Berry merch because at first we were going by my name, mm-hmm. um, and then that didn't fit anymore because it is such a collaborative, like group effort. Um, we're all really involved most of the time. No, all the time. <laughs> uh, the band is writing their parts. You know, I present the song, and they. Um, they riff on that and we work together to arrange it, but it's really collaborative. And, um, but yeah, part of, part of that, uh, crowdfunding was a radio campaign and I'd heard really good things about tiger bomb. And, um, I can confirm now that all those good things are true. Um, they just work. How do you spell their name? I'm, I'm curious about (laughs) that. Yeah. Tiger, like the, you know, tiger an animal yeah, <laughs> and right. then bomb like the exploding bomb tiger bomb oh tiger promo. bomb yeah wow uh, and they're they mostly focus on college radio okay um so a lot of or pretty much all of the radio that we are played on um across the country are like college stations or like they're in that I don't remember the exact number there's like you know with football there's like 1a or something it's something like that right right something like that yeah um and they just really went to bat for us and um even now even though our campaign is over like I still am in contact with Jill um we play studio 1a on Monday nice um, at KTX yeah Uh and we're the first we're the first ones back, like post pandemic. Um, I mean, we're not out of post, we're not post pandemic, but we're the first ones back in the studio since they took a pause. And um, Shill nice. has actually moved here from Athens, um, I think, or he's going to, um, but he's going to be at the Studio 1A. And he was the one that really sort of um, started pushing to make that happen and also to get us in rotation um atx and he would come to me you know for the duration of our campaign like every monday i think was like our check-in and he'd be like these are the stations we've contacted these are their comments you know what they thought about the song whether they've added it um and every week i was like okay but what about ktx (laughs) Like, are you like, are you hearing from them? And he was like, you know, it's it's hard. Like, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to get everyone to answer. Like, I'm, I'm working on it. And I was pretty persistent. I mean, like, I'm great. I'm absolutely floored and grateful for every station we're played on. Um, but KTX is a big deal in my mind. And um, and yeah, it was about a year later, like a year after the campaign I got an email from Rick McNulty saying hey Paige I listened to Celia we really like the track we're gonna get this in rotation and I was just my job just like fell to the floor and I was like I think about that story so often like when like talking about what I was earlier just about like persistence it took a year it took a whole year (laughs) Uh, got it done and it happened. And, you know, so much of that was like, I had a lot of help. Um, like Mm -hmm. she was really involved with, he was in contact with not only Rick McNulty, you know, who's the program director, but also Deidre got, um, I mean, everyone on staff at KTX is like pure joy, like angels, you know, they're, um, everything. I love them. Um, but yeah, uh, Celia's in rotation and it's mind blowing. (laughs) In summary. (laughs) All right. So this is a good place. We're going to play it for our listeners now. Cool.
my gosh. Yeah. Oh, well, that's the reason I got a hold of you it was because I, I heard it on KUTX and it was, like I said, the only other group I work with is called Bright Light Social Hour. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. They've been on rotation, but you and them, other than that, I, I don't think I know anybody else on rotation in Austin. There's been a couple that I, you know, every, I think KUTX is so great about the variety that they do. Right. Um, and I will hear my friends, you know, being played every now and again. Um, and I honestly, I haven't heard Celia in a minute, but I think it's still in rotation. <laughs> um, I'm like pretty sure because right. people are still talking to me about it. Um, I am in the car more now than I was, um, but it's been a minute. Um, but yeah, it's it's a big, it's a big deal. Um, and I'm just, I'm really stoked to move forward. I hope we've got some really cool things in the works. Um, we're releasing a single next Thursday um, that was a collaboration with Thor Harris. Um, oh, who, I've worked with Thor. Yeah, yeah. Thor's amazing, man. Yeah. He he saw um, a live stream that we did during pandemic and um, hit me up on Twitter, which like I used to be so active on Twitter. I'm not anymore, but happened to see his DM and he was like, Hey, I saw you, uh, on, as part of this live stream, if you ever want to collaborate, let me know. And I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> I saw him open for Y Oak, which is one of my all time favorite bands, hugely influential. And, um, he just blew me away. I mean, he has, what like 20 people on stage with him uh, like Sounds play like uh-huh and I was just like what is this and it was it stuck in my mind and um so to hear from him and especially to know that he's like connected with some of my favorite absolute favorite artists um I was like I will for sure take you up on this so um we did a collaboration and it's really weird and really cool <laughs> um that's coming down the line that's august 5th is the release so i think next thursday um and then we're working on three more singles right now uh, mm -hmm. got approached by a couple different um producers that were like hey we'd really like to work with you um and I think the ultimate goal is like in consideration of like more work like down the road. Um, so it's pretty wild to all of a sudden have like three new, like not only new songs, but like, um, like new singles, like these songs will be on the EP, you know? So it feels right. like we're on the way to the next EP uh, by way of these um, singles and man, I am, ex I'm excited. They're sounding just really really good I love this lineup of the band the band has regenerated itself like three four times <laughs> okay. uh, yeah it's man that's another uh lesson in persistence right there <laughs> right it's just to keep the band going through keep personnel going. changes and like we were so we're transitioning drummers um our drummer Brian is uh leaving us at the end of the month and I love him to death. I am so sad to see him go. Um, like I said, this current lineup feels just so, so good to me. It's more, I think, rock and roll, even than like the album uh, or the EP. Uh, and just, it's just got an energy that um, feels really fresh and new. But yeah, we're transitioning drummers. And I, c I felt this go around like sort of our... Um, progress in that in the past there's been some you know it's it was a uh i don't know a challenge to find a person to replace the people who left um but this time we had a new drummer the day the day brian said he was leaving vanessa was like hey i think riley might be interested riley corcoran he's in the naked tongues he's in a couple of other projects too um and she hit him up and he was like, yeah, I'm down. And we tried it out and it's a great fit. And so we already have a new drummer and I'm like, sweet. That's a relief. <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah. 
Um, and he, and he's got amazing energy too. Um, and I think something that I feel really grateful for is that I genuinely love the people in my band. band. And it's so much more important to me. I like, luckily they're incredible musicians. Like each and every one of them are amazing songwriters, like in their own right, um, have their own projects and just are like incredibly technically talented um do you want but, to shout their names out or oh yeah of course yeah, let's this, do that. yeah jake ames um on which instrument he's lead guitar okay and wow he's in my opinion and i'm biased but he is one of the best guitarists i've ever heard he is such a shredder he's just got such an intuitive feel um and watching him like last night somebody got a video at our show of him like on a solo and it's just like watching him go into this like other universe like he is somewhere else and it's just like pouring out of him and it's just it's really amazing uh to watch and he's my best friend I've known him since I've moved here I bet I met him almost immediately um and yeah just one of my best friends in the world um Vanessa Jolly is on bass and Wow. I like everyone. I'm like, I love them. I love them so much. Um, J- Vanessa, actually, she's in Sailor Poon, um, which is like an all femme punk band here in Austin. Yeah. And also in a project called uh, Tear Jerk. I was, I guess I should shout out Jake's projects too. Jake says in, Jake is in the stacks. He's in Half Dream. He's in Knife Channel. He's in Tyler. Oh, no, they changed the name. Good Looks. Um and serum which used to be continental drift (laughs) so he's in like a million projects um but yeah vanessa um and jake are actually dating (laughs) and that's how i met vanessa um and we needed we were transitioning bass players we needed a new bass player and she just kind of threw it out on instagram she was like hey if you ever like wanted to just like jam around like bass stuff like i'd I don't play bass, but, you know, I play guitar and I'd love to like give it a shot, just like really casual. And I was like, please be in my band. (laughs) I just immediately loved her. Like, so she she learned to play bass for you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, I mean, Tyler, my partner at the time, um, was he in the band at the time? He was. Yeah. So he left the band, um, March of last year. So right around the pandemic, um, we ended our relationship and, um, that was a really important relationship for me and, uh, it's still painful. I'm still, you know, working through it. And, um, he really supported me and, and pushed me to get out of my comfort zone and start this project. And um, I'm immensely grateful to him. And uh, what what instrument did he play in the band? Lead guitar. Okay, uh, so so Jake has taken. Yeah, his, and they're best friends. <laughs> um, so man, Austin's such a small small world. Yes, uh, yes, but, um, indeed. Tyler's on the album. Um, the lineup on the album is you know completely different than the lineup that we have now. Um, but Tyler was uh, a huge 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 part um, of Half Dream. And um, Jake really was actually only meant to fill in until we found a more permanent solution. Um, But then it just really clicked in a way that none of us saw coming because Jake is, he's pretty noodly. Like he's really, he's really getting after it on the guitar. And there's, I think, especially the way the songs used to be, there was a lot of open space, a lot of um, very ethereal sort of, vibes and i i think all of us were like is jake just gonna you know steamroll this thing but uh he of course he didn't because he's brilliant and he he has such a feel and it just clicked like it just worked um and i feel the the same sorry go ahead the the guitarist on this track on celia was that jake that's tyler that's That's tyler Tyler. jordan okay gotcha yeah on the monster of meeting it's tyler jordan caitlin callis on bass um, and Connor Strickland on drums and I, yeah, yeah, I owe them so, 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 so much. Um, you know, we have transitioned away from playing with each other, but, um, they, they also, I mean, they put in really hard work. We're a huge part of the Kickstarter campaign and, um, 
I mean, recording, especially recording. Um, Where you know, did you record? We recorded at uh, Drift. No, 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 no. That's who I did my single with. <laughs> Dan Dzinski of Dandy Sounds. He's in Dripping Springs. And um, he is brilliant. I, Again, I'm just like gushing about everyone that I've worked with and played with. But um, he's in Loma and he's also in uh, Cross Record. I think he's still in Cross Record and any kind those are his projects and um he's worked with artists like molly birch i want to say he did julia lucille too he basically he works with a bunch of artists that i really respect right. and admire and um just such a mind for arrangement and production like if you listen to monster of needing with headphones on there's all kinds of just all these little, all these little details, I guess like Easter eggs, um, all these little touches that he did that are just chef's kiss, you know, it's, he's, he's a real talent and, um, you know, his studio's out in Dripping Springs on, you know, a few acres and it's gorgeous, just such yeah. a really nice place to record. Um, it really set it's the a difference, doesn't vibe. it? Very, yeah, it, it makes a huge difference, like, to be able to be like, okay, let's take a break, and then we, like, walk around in the, you know, like, the cedar trees in the middle of a field in the hill country, like, that's, that's the stuff. <laughs> that is the stuff. Uh-huh. Um, um, wow. Yeah. Oh, I guess I should shout out Brian, also. Brian, Go ahead and shout him out. He's, um, he's the drummer that's leaving us. RIP. Just kidding. We love him so much. And, uh, he just really decided that, um, over pandemic, he noticed that he really enjoyed playing, um, you know, like alone <laughs> in his house, like right. production and, and focusing on his projects. And he's just like a really busy person. And, yeah, you know, um, he was like, I just don't, you know, I don't think that this is like where, um, like my time is right now. And I was like, I totally understand. I, I wish I could keep you forever, but I totally get it. And, um, we're really excited to have Riley. He's actually going to be joining us for studio one a on Monday. Oh, wow. That's his first gig with you. It's his first gig with us. And he, uh, man, he was really thrown in there, uh, to make okay. it work with all of our schedules. And he's, um, he's done a beautiful, beautiful job. So Where do you rehearsed at your house or. We rehearse at Jake's. Um, Jake mm -hmm. lives with our friend. Um, oh, no. I knew I was going to blank immediately. It's okay. Uh, he... David Dalton. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> I, like, he's legit my friend, so I'm like, that's embarrassing. Um, David Dalton of Driftwork Sound. He's a producer and a musician. And, um, gosh, I love him to death. Really funny guy. Um, our working relationship's really silly. I... He's very easy to work with. Um, we have like a very good rapport. And he produced I Am My Own God, which is the single that's coming out next week with Thor. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So he like pieced. I worked with him um, on, you know, recording vocals and he added, he added, you know, the effects and, and did, did his magic. Jake played guitar. My partner, um, David Stone, uh, played f uh, violin and... Thor added like we gave him the you know the click track <laughs> and he uh and he sent his his part and it was just, wow layers of just like insanity like massive percussion genius. oh yeah just yeah. like I knew that it was the perfect track to send to him um because there's such a build at the end and I was like he will nail it and he did oh um, wow so, yeah well, I, I, I run about two to three months behind. So unfortunately, sure. this it's, okay. it, it'll, it's already <laughs> out. If you're listening right now, both Celia is out and I am, <laughs> I'm sorry, I am my own God. Is that what you mm -hmm. said? Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure by now when you're listening, it'll be on iTunes, Spotify. Sorry. It'll be in all the places. And also, you know, what's the best way for people to, to find, find you? Yeah, so we're on all the things. Um, on most everything, we're at Half Dream Music. So okay, Facebook, at Half Dream Music, is that your website? So it's halfdreammusic.com. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And um, where is it? Halfdream.com. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Let's well, I will, I'll, I'll fix it in post. Don't 
Don't worry about it. <laughs> it is halfdreammusic.com. Okay. okay. I trusted myself. Okay. Um, halfdreammusic.com. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Instagram is where I'm most active. Okay. I'm really out there being silly and ridiculous on our um, on our Instagram. Um, and I tend to be pretty uh, vocal about our upcoming shows, like on on Instagram. Yeah. So that's and probably the best way. As I've I've been doing live stream on Facebook Live. What did you guys use? We did mostly Instagram live. Okay, you um, did Instagram live. Mm-hmm. Back when we were doing more of that, you know, out of necessity. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, that is what we did. And, you know, we might have to go back to that depending on I hope by the time this airs we have a little bit more resolution in that way. <laughs> Um, I am just playing it by ear. I don't know about you, but yeah. I'm wearing my mask. I'm yep. I'm not booking any more indoor shows for a while. Only playing outside. Um, my tour does have like three indoor dates, but um, I'm gonna be as careful as I can because I don't want this thing. And I don't. I'm, I mean, I'm vaccinated, and right. um, our whole band is. And uh, it's hard. The start stop is really tough. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I hope, <laughs> I hope that we have, um, that we're fully back at it by the time this airs. That would be great. Well, Paige, I'm so glad we finally could agree on a time. I well, Thank and, you uh, so much. Cause I mean, you were someplace with bad internet or some other, th- you, you lost. It your- was really happening there for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, life happens. At least you didn't get happens. COVID, you know? Not yet. Knock on wood. I'm really exactly. trying not to. Well, um, it, yeah, you're just a delight. I'm, I'm so happy to have right. Thank you. had the opportunity. And I'll obviously I'll let you know when this is actually coming out. And uh, I really I mean, enjoyed this. Like, Oh, cool. Is there anything I'm you want to add that I didn't uh, hit on? Um, well, you know, the last thing I'll add. Yes. Um, I always say this in every set. So it feels, and pretty much any time in this like setting as well. Right, right. Um, The thing that really got me through, (laughs) uh, just got me through in general and also sort of has helped me get to where I am now is therapy. And I'm such a big advocate for mental health and therapy. Um, I am medicated. (laughs) Uh, It saved my life, literally. Yeah. Um, Therapy saved my life, literally. And here in Austin, we have just some incredible resources. Um, Sims is for musicians and for the family of musicians and industry workers. Um, And they have, they provided my last therapist, which we just transitioned because she got a new job. Um, Right, right. The best therapist I've ever had. Brandy Smith, if she ever goes back into practice, I'll be her first. <laughs> her first client, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, just can't say enough good things about Sims. Um, Ham is physical health, you know, but like right. physical and mental health are so tied together. Um, yeah. Together. Oh, and wonderful so, organizations. Oh my gosh. Like, and I, truly, I mean, Austin's so special, but this is such a huge reason that it's special. We could do more to support our musicians, but like there are some incredible resources in place that just don't exist anywhere else. In other towns, yeah. In other towns. I mean, certainly not in my hometown uh, that I know of. Right. Um, And then there's Capital Area Counseling, which is where I first started counseling here. And it's free and sliding scale therapy. I paid $5 for like the two years that I was there. And I rotated through a few therapists there because that's the kind of, that's the deal is that they're getting their practicum hours um the quality is no less um you know it's no less than any other therapy that I've ever done um and man I just I I wish that I could have started therapy as a kid you know I can't recommend it enough particularly for musicians and particularly in this time when it's just like chaos and very confusing um yeah. So I'm always at the end of my set. The last thing I say before our last song is like, please go to therapy. If you have any questions about therapy or you just need somebody to talk to, I am here because I have been there at rock bottom and I would love to make sure that no one else has to be in that place. So 
that's my last two cents. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I am in therapy as well for many years. And so I am in total agreement with your statement. So yep. that's, that's pretty cool. Thank you for giving me the space to say Oh, that. you're quite welcome, Paige. Have a great day. You and, too. And uh, continued success to you. Thank you so much. I'll okay, talk to you. Bye-bye. Bye.